I'm down in the lazarette with uh, Pivo, my work buddy, and we are solving a problem that has really bugged me. We're getting a new battery set up. Welcome back to the rudder. My name's Damien. We're aboard Antoinette. Pippa is helping me out today. Uh, well, we're just going on a drive north because we're getting the boat serviced. And as part of that service, I'm getting a new battery set up. So before we get it all new and improved, and I'll show you that when it's done, let's have a look at what we've got because if you've had a look through my other videos, you know this is something that has really bugged me. So there are the batteries. And you can note we've got two batteries and we have two motors. So the way this is set up is left battery starts the starboard side motor and the right battery starts the port side motor. The port side also is the house battery. If you're a keen eyed follower, you'll note that those two batteries are both starter batteries because I've started making the changeover. But in my previous setup, port side battery is the house battery and supplies everything you need to stay aboard for a while but it also starts the motor. And that's the bit that I've always had an issue with is that your house batteries are starting a motor. In the battery isolation box, we can see some of the issue I'm talking about. So this is the two isolators for the port and starboard battery. And you can see they've labeled it wrong, but you see it's got starboard and accessory. It's actually port and accessory. And this one's just single. So one battery is doing two jobs. Uh, when I bought this factory, the way they'd solve this is that both of the batteries were what they call all-rounders that do starting duties as well as house battery. Um, because I want to put bigger house batteries in because we want to stay away for a while, that really wasn't an option for us. And um, the other thing is you'll probably, in the comments, there'll be lots of things talking about lithium. Uh, there was lots of conversation about lithium before we went up. Whoa. <laughs> in this day and age, if you're talking you want lots of power, you want lots of house power, everyone is going lithium, the caravan industry is really stepping forward with that. I've had lots of conversations about lithium um, and I'm sure this might light up the comments down below. I'm not going with lithium after talking with the Yamaha um, mechanics. Lithium batteries can really take a lot of ampage and they will suck as much ampage as they possibly can and that can have detrimental effects on your alternator. There are ways around that, of course, um, but following a lot of conversations, I've decided to go with AGM. So we'll see that when we get in there and how I've wired it up. It also makes my setup a little bit easier um, and not as many components, which for marine, you know, the less components, the simpler it is, I think the better. So what is gonna happen when we get up to service? Well, what they're gonna be doing is keeping these two starter motors. So we're going to have two starter motors for two motors. So each starter will start its respective battery, which is fantastic. The second step is new house battery. So we're going to end up with three banks of batteries as opposed to the two that you get in the factory setup. So let's get going. Let's get up there. Um, we'll let them do the work and then we can go through it at the end. Antoinette is back with the upgrade. I'm down in the lazarette. I've got Pippa here giving me a, a bit of a hand. Um, so yeah, we're down in the lazarette. Let's go have a look at the battery setup we've got. Uh, we've been out for the night, so we can see how uh, the batteries have gone. It's only been a night and it all went fine. Uh, so let's have a look at what we've got because there is a really big change. So where we had the other batteries, you'll note we have two batteries still. They are the starter batteries one for each motor and on the other side we have brand new twin AGMs so just looking up a little bit so we now have four batteries these are the two starter banks um, so port side starboard side starter batteries completely isolated from everything else over here for starters we have a new shelf um, didn't show you in here previously, but this used to be an area where we stored the anchor and other wet gear. So I've lost that space, but I do like that 
um, I, when I put the covers back on, I've got all the space here and can, can fit a surfboard in. These two banks are joined together, as we can see, and are charged from the accessory side of the engines. So both alternators are charging this battery bank. So these batteries are full river batteries, 120 amp hours each. So 240 amp hours altogether, but they are AGM. So you're only going to get half of that. You only want to use half of that. So we have 120 amp hours at our disposal to keep using. And there's a bit of that shelf and all nice new wiring. The house batteries are now connected to the auxiliaries of both engines. So I'm actually getting more amperage into these batteries than previously than just using one. And they're on the auxiliary side. So it's separate to the starters. It's also on the charger, a separate output on the charger. So everything can be hooked up. So the lead acid, the starter batteries get different settings to the AGM, which is what we need, which I think is what the problem I had previously. They did a little bit of tinkering to move things. So that's the Victor on battery monitor. Just under here is uh, the, that's the FabDoc computer. And you'll notice on the starters, there's nothing else but starter reds. And here is everything else uh, for the house batteries. Fairly happy with that, so let's have a look at some of the other little changes they've made um, to accommodate this. But yeah, all looking good. The other thing is, it does mean I'm going to put a bit more stuff in here. It's a bit of a mess at the minute, they, um, they kind of just threw it all in there. But we'll sort that out. I haven't packed everything away properly, but I'm very happy that they didn't put an extra shelf or something in here, which I have seen them do. So it means I've got that long space because I do fit a surfboard in here. The other difference is what we've got in our isolation cabinet. We now have three isolators and they're actually all labeled correctly and doing the right thing. One for each starter battery, so we can, we're at anchor now, so we can isolate those. And this now is uh, isolation for the accessory bank or the house bank. That will merge the two starter batteries. I didn't get another key to merge all banks together because if you've blown up your starter batteries, you know, you're really in a lot more trouble than that. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with how everything's going at the minute. We were just out overnight. We used, um, I think about 40 amp hours, which was about 85% of the battery. I then, when we just, we just come for a little bit of a- It wasn't 85%, we had 85 left. Oh, yeah. Probably you need to say that. Sorry to buddy, we had 85 left. No worries. <laughs> we've been out overnight. And we used about 15% of the battery, so we had 85% left, and that was about 39 amp hours. We've just driven back down again, and even only driving about half an hour, we have recharged the batteries fully. I had a look when we were driving, and we're pushing in about 35 amps, which is pretty amazing, which is a lot more than we used to. Uh, that's why we we're up on the plane. So, very happy. I want these ones to last a long time. They cost a little bit. So... If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below and we'll see you next time on the rudder.